Hello and welcome back to the Groundbreaker International YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about uh, the Shekinah glory of God, the manifest presence of God, and some deep meaning within the words Shekinah and glory and what that means. It's a little bit different, I think, than we imagine sometimes. So I wanted to bring this teaching to you today because I believe that the church needs a greater understanding of the true meaning of the glory of God. We don't have things all figured out. I know I don't have things all figured out, but I continually seek after the presence of God and seek after the mysteries of the Word of God because I believe that the more that we learn about Him, the closer that we get to Him. Let's talk about the glory of God today and the Shekinah glory and where that word comes from. Now, the word Shekinah is actually an extra biblical word. You won't find Shekinah glory anywhere in the Bible, but it comes from a root word, Shekan, and we see that in several scriptures here. In Exodus chapter 40, verse 35, we see it also in Genesis 9, 27, 14, 13, Psalm 37, 3, and Jeremiah 33, 16. So Shekan, uh, rather, that root word, actually means to dwell. So when we talk about the Shekinah glory, the root word is to dwell in the glory. Now, Jews put that word together. Shekinah is an extra biblical word, and it gives us an understanding of this word right here, Shekinah. This is what it means. It means he caused to dwell. So the glory of God will cause us to dwell with him and him with us. And so if we break that down, uh, it's a, it all has the connotation of dwelling place. So when we talk about the Shekinah glory of God, we're talking about the manifest presence of the Kabod, the glory, the weighty presence. Now, even though it's not actually in the Bible, Shekinah, the connotation is all throughout the, the scripture that God wants to abide in us. He wants to dwell among his people. God wanted to dwell among his people, the Jews. And so he set forth Moses to build the tabernacle. He set forth the people to build the Ark of the Covenant, to house the presence of God, to house his Shekinah, his dwelling presence. But something that I've found within churches today is that we look at Shekinah glory as something uh, that only has one meaning to it. And what I found is, is that we tend to look at the uh, Shekinah, the dwelling, as just peace. And I believe that we've come to a place where we need to come past just the peace of God. Now, I find it very interesting that in the book of Enoch, which is uh, not a biblically uh, canonized book, but uh, we're just going to use it today as, as just a reference point here. But in the book of Enoch 3, the third book of Enoch, which is called the Hebrew book of Enoch, there is a rabbi by the name of uh, Ishmael ben Elisha, who is fabled to be the son of the prophet Elisha. And he has an account, a vision, in which he wrote in this book of Enoch here, and he talked about the Shekinah glory infiltrating his soul, bringing enlightenment and understanding. Now, there's some co commentary by uh, Joseph Lumpkin that brought commentary on the third book of Enoch here. And he stated uh, some things about the Shekinah glory that I thought were very interesting in that the Shekinah or the Shekinah, the dwelling glory of God, is not just about... Uh, it's not just about the peace of God, but that it's about multifaceted things. That the glory of God that manifests actually brings not just peace, but also understanding, wisdom, creativity, all different facets of God that he brings to the table. And the reason I want to tell you that is this today, speaking to the church, when we talk about the manifest presence of God, it's not just about receiving peace. It's not just about the atmosphere being charged with a peacefulness or a restfulness, although we do believe that God is resting in that place. That's what uh, we want to happen is God to rest in that place. But we need to understand that God wants to do more than just sit there and rest, 
that there are other things that God can put in us. Now, in the account here uh, with uh, Rabbi Ishmael ben Elisha, who had this vision and wrote this book, talked about the Shekinah glory infiltrating his soul and bringing enlightenment and understanding. And so it said that uh, during that point in time that the, the presence of God actually infiltrated, came through his eyes that the light shone and went down into his spirit, and it brought forth a revelation. Now think about in the Bible, John the Revelator, who uh, had an experience with God. Daniel the prophet, who had these experiences with God, where they felt weak to where they could not stand up. They were in the Shekinah glory of God. They were in that Shekinah time period, uh, that Shekinah place where God was dwelling among them, physically in a place where their spirit was with him in that moment. Now, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. But there are times where he manifests, he rests in a place and rests over his people. And so during that, those times where they, they are with the presence of God, they no longer are able to stand up. Many times they're not able to speak. A lot of times, even the angels that carry the presence of God with them they're in the presence of angels where they cannot speak, they cannot stand, they can't do anything but lay dead as a dead man. And so the, what happens, though, is after they get up, because God many times will take the strength out of you to, to let you become weak so he can put something in you so that when you get back up, that you're strengthened supernaturally. Now, I, I just think it's so interesting that the time that I spend in the presence of God in both corporately in a corporate praise and worship setting and in private, that there are many times where you just feel the presence of God so much you can't stand up. You know, I, one of a, a couple of my great friends, minister friends, have been asked before why people fall down in the presence of God. And, you know, some people, obviously, people can fake it. I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. But there are times when the weighty presence of God comes and people cannot stand up in it, whether they're, uh, people are praying for them and the anointing is strong on them or whether they're just in praise and worship and seeking after God, they just can't stand up. And that was the answer that they've given them. Well, they can't stand up. It's not really that scientific. You know, our physical bodies can only handle so much. And when the presence of God comes in, sometimes our physical strength becomes depleted. And so during those times, many times God is putting something on the inside of us. And supernaturally, the glory will bring, uh, the glory will bring wisdom and understanding about things. So I look in it to this. For about the past decade, God has gotten a hold of me personally in such a way that I can't go back. I can't go backwards because I've spent time in the presence of God in those times, in the times of the, the manifest presence in the glory, God puts things on the inside of me and he brings you to greater understanding. It's something that you can't teach in a book. It's something I can't teach you on YouTube. Listen, you can, I can teach you all the Hebrew in the world, but in, if it's not uh, coupled with the Spirit of God resting in you, you're not going to go any higher. It's just going to be knowledge. It's just going to be like a clanging symbol. It's not going to mean anything. We have to have both the Word of God and the manifest presence of God in our lives enable for us to go higher, enable for us to go deeper, and for us to go uh, closer and closer to the Spirit of God. It, just a mental ascent does not work. That's why uh, that dwelling, the shikan, God dwelling His presence in us, He's actually putting things on the inside of us. The Shekinah glory brings with it supernatural understanding and wisdom that will not come from a teacher or a book. Spending time in the Shekinah, in the royal presence, will bring more understanding of him. And that's something else interesting I want to point out to you. That word Shekinah there actually can also mean in the royal presence of. Like in, if you're in the presence of a king or a, a queen in the presence of royalty. 
So when God comes to dwell, it's the king who is coming to dwell among us and to put something in us. He doesn't just come to give us good services. He doesn't just come to give us just a nice feeling of peace. All of that kind of thinking, honestly, it needs to stop in the church because God's trying to bring the church to a greater understanding of Him. There are so many facets of God that even the angels, when they circle around His throne, saying, holy, 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 every time they circle around, they see another facet of Him. They see more characteristics they've never seen of Him before. And it causes that charge to say, you are holy, you are holy. And the manifest presence of God being so strong should cause us to see more facets of Him. If you go to a church service or you're in your prayer time, whatever the case is, and you're spending time with God, and you say, oh, I just feel the glory of God. Oh, I'm just feeling the glory. I'm feeling the glory. But you're never changed. I seriously ask the question, are you really getting a touch truly from the supernatural God. Because if God is truly touching you, God's presence, the literal manifest glory of God, the kabod, the weighty presence is shikan. It's dwelling among you. It's going to change you. It has to change you. You're going to be enlightened with wisdom and understanding. You're going to have creative ideas are going to come out of that. Your life is going to be completely changed. And over the past 10 years, as I've spent more and more time in the presence of God, deeper than I did when I was even younger, my life has changed. My family has changed. Our ministry has gone to other levels, not because of me. It's because of spending time like a dead man laying in the presence of God, in a place of humbleness, in a place that only He can take you to the places that He wants to take you. And so that's my prayer for you today. During the time that we're in right now, all of the crazy things going on in the world, I believe that it's important for us to spend time in the kabod, the weighty presence of God, and to let Him shikan, to let Him dwell among us with His shekinah glory, the dwelling place glory among us. And I believe that if we do that and continue to study His Word, and if you're on these videos, uh, if you're here watching right now, you're seeking after more of Him. That's what you're doing. If you enjoy all of the Hebrew teachings and all the deeper uh, meanings of the Word of God, you're seeking after the Word of God, and that's great. Now, we also need to make sure that we seek His face, not just the words on the page, but also seek the heart of God seek the presence of God, it will change your life. I hope that you enjoyed today's teaching. And until next time, God bless you. God bless your family. We'll see you real soon. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that notification bell so you can receive updates for when new content arrives. Also be sure to visit our website at gbreaker.org. From there, you can learn more about Groundbreaker International, and if the Lord leads you to do so, you can sow a financial seed of blessing. Now, I would like to invite you to check out one of these other videos from Groundbreaker International's YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless.